Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is to God that we give all the glory, God, and the praise, and we're once again able to meet you here before the camera again. We thank God for all that he has done, that he's still doing. Well, July is history, and we're beginning in the month of August, which is August the 2nd, uh, 2020, our first Sunday. And our first Sunday is centered around our youth uh, this morning. I'm hoping that I have some of them watching and, and paying attention. You know, we always started with a little task we had to do, and that was to memorize Psalms 23. So I'm going to read Psalm 23, of course, that's not what I'm going to preach from this morning, uh, but I'm going to read Psalm 23, keep it fresh in your mind, because it's a good psalm, and on top of that, uh, not only did David say God was his shepherd, but he's your shepherd as well. And all of our uh, church membership, I want you to know that God is still your shepherd. Amen. I thank God for all that he has done, and I do praise his name. I trust I'm praying and trusting that you're doing well and that things are going according to God's plan. I believe as things continue to, to move on, we will one day probably be back in the worship where we can see each other face to face. But right now with the pandemic, we're still taking precautionary measures. I think some churches have gone back and they're required to wear their masks. And so we will be looking at that to see whether or not it's feasible for us to come back into the sanctuary and worship. Of course, there will be a, strict, a change in worship, and there will be some stricter rules in worship. We won't be able to go back to the norm like we were before. Anyway, we're still praying, but you can still watch. You can still see us on, on YouTube and on, uh, on Facebook. I plan to keep this going for a while until we can uh, get back into the sanctuary. Once we get back to the sanctuary, we'll try to have some things in place where we can still probably do live recording. But that's in the future. <clears throat> so Psalm 23, for our youth this morning, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou will notice mine hit with all my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. I'm hoping that you all are grasping that Psalm 23, and certainly that you are reading it and, and, and able to, to memorize it. Amen. It's a great scripture. It's a great scripture for all of us. And when we get down into areas of our lives that seem like things are going haywire, you can declare that the Lord is your shepherd. Praise God. Well, this morning I have two scriptures from the, from the well, yeah, two, two scriptures from Mark Gospel. As a matter of fact, it's Mark 9, verse 19, and also Mark 10, verse 14 and 16. And as much as I said, it's centered around our children, but I want to talk to parents this morning concerning our children. Amen. And so, and there's a story in Mark 9. I'm going to read one verse. Of course, you have to go back and peruse it as you in your spare time. And also, I will read a scripture from Mark 10, verse 14 through 16. You'll, 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 you'll get it as soon as I start reading it. But in Mark 9, uh, verse 19, these words you'll find. Jesus says this. He answered, answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Here's what I want you to pay close attention to. Bring him unto me. Bring him unto me. I want you to get that. Bring him unto me. And there was something going on reading why the father brought this boy to the disciples. <clears throat> and also in chapter 10 of Mark, verse 14. Let's note some verses here. As a matter of fact, verse 14 through 16. Amen. In Mark chapter 10, verse 14 through 16. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter 
therein. And he took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them. He took them up in his arm, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Amen. Amen. Bow with me. Father, <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, I am grateful again that thou hast blessed us to come and to sit before this camera behind this sacred desk. Thank you, dear God, for all that you have done in all of our lives. Master, we thank you most of all for Jesus Christ. Your divine eternal son is him you gave this world, God, is through him that we would have life and have it more abundantly. Master, we pause to say we thank you. Thank you, God, for one more week journey. It was you, Lord, that blessed us day in and day out. You kept us from the seen and unseen danger. And Father, we pause to say we thank you. Thank you, God, for such things as food, raiment, and shelter. Thank you, my Lord, for providing in thy own way. We realize, God, that had it not been for you and your divine grace, we would not be here today. But God, we pause to say we thank you for your amazing grace. And we thank you, God, for letting Jesus come and pay our sin debt on Calvary Cross. Thank you, Father, for, for paying the debt to get us out of sin's grip, get us out of jail and sin. Lord, we thank you for delivering us through Jesus Christ. And Father, as we bow, Lord, we praise your name because we know that thou art worthy of all the praise. Lord, not only do we thank you for Jesus' death, but we thank you for his resurrection. We can praise you today because Jesus rose according to the scripture on the third day morning, which I believe. Thank you, Lord, for the resurrection. Oh God, we beg of thee for forgiveness of all of our sin. And we do pray for continued divine strength. Remain faithful, steadfast, unmovable, master to do your will. Thank you, dear Lord, for all you're doing right now. And God, we ask a blessing upon every listening ear and upon every eye that is able to see us this morning. We pray that I would bless them for whatever they stand in need of. And God, we pray that I would save the son of man, woman, boy, or girl who know you not in the very free pardon of her is sin. Pray that I would cause mankind to turn to you, God, before it's too late in their lives. Oh, Father, as we come in Jesus, Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit. Pray that you allow him to come, God, and sup with me this morning. And Lord, I pray that I would take me down on the set. Let me be able, oh, Lord, to preach your word. Lord God, I pray that I would bring to memory that which you caused me to study, to meditate thereupon. Father, grant unto me clarity of speech, I'll be able to rightly divide your word of truth. Oh God, let the words from my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in this sight. Lord God, my strength and my redeemer. Master, it is in the name of Jesus Christ, your divine, powerful son, that I humbly bow. Beg of you these blessings, all petition we do pray. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for praying with and for us. And we thank God for all that he has done in all of our lives. <clears throat> so this morning we take a peek at stories that happening in Mark Gospel chapter 9 verse 19 and also Mark chapter 10 verse 14 through 16. I'll title this message this morning, Saints of God, The Command Concerning Our Children. The Command Concerning Our Children. The last portion of verse 19 in Mark 9 says, uh, uh, Bring him unto me. And I'm going to tell us to bring them to Jesus. Bring your children to Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is a must because we see so much going on in our world. And you sometimes wonder, where did it all start from? And I have to go back to the seat where it all started from. Amen. It started from childhood. It started from home. It started from us rearing our children. A lot of times when a child is not reared correctly, and we try to do the best we can. We still make some flaws. But at the same time, uh, when the child misses certain things in their life, it's going to be hard to get them to come to Christ at an older age. And so I'm, I'm begging you this morning, saints, to, to those of us who have children and, and grandchildren, catch them while they're young. Amen. So, so I want to look at parents bringing your children 
to Jesus. That's very important. Uh, this thought came to me as I was preparing for today's message uh, through studying Mark Gospel in chapter 9 and 10. Uh, when he writes about Jesus, when Mark writes about Jesus, a, a father and a son in chapter 9, amen, in chapter, in, and children in chapter 10 of Mark, Jesus had and still do have a great interest in our children even today. Our parents should have a very strong interest in their children as well. My sisters and brothers, we must try with all the love we have in us from Christ to do our best before our children so that when they do come to the age of accountability and make some decisions contrary to the teaching uh, they have learned from their parents, we won't have to worry or wonder whether we taught them right from wrong. Amen. If you do it while they're young. Matter of fact, that there was a scripture that brings out what I'm saying this morning. In Proverbs 22 and 6, the preacher says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And so it starts when they're young. We don't wait till our children get to, to, to 19, 20 years old and then think we can train them. It starts as an infant when they're born into the world. <clears throat> there must have been something attractive about Jesus. Amen. His personality, the beauty of his spirit, the charm of his conversation. That, there must be some attractiveness there. And the love that he had for all. Without doubt, he was tasteful and neat in dress. Jesus was courteous in manner, gentle, tender, cheerful, social. He was in the life a companion and a friend. All sorts of people were attracted to him. Some was attracted because of his teaching, and some was attracted because they were jealous. Some just was attracted because they wanted to see if they could catch him in what he knew. Amen. But Jesus was the friend of children. During his walk on earth among them, he was a friend to children. Matter of fact, the children loved him, and, and he loved them. On one occasion, some parents brought that children to him that he might bless them. Nevertheless, he was busy or occupied in some manner, and his disciples rebuked those who were bringing children to Christ. <clears throat> Imagine their surprise when they were rebuked and the parents were encouraged to bring the children to him. He said, let them alone. Let them come to me. So Christ welcomes the children. Yes, he welcomes every child that's born into this world. The children of today are the leaders of tomorrow, but they will not lead anybody if they, not, if they are not prepared at an early age. If they are not prepared to, to accept instruction, if they are not prepared or to listen and learn, if they're used to raising themselves, <clears throat> it's going to be mighty hard for us to train them. Amen. And so the children of the day are the leaders of tomorrow, provided they are trained correctly from home. It must start at home. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't wait to send our children to school or, or send them to some Bible class to be trained uh, and disciplined. We, we try our best to instill it into them while they are growing. And that's a parent, uh, amen, responsibility. It's mom and dad responsibility. Amen. A child is much more responsive for, to the message of God's love than is an adult, uh, which means that parents are to tell their children about Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And, and parents, we got to take time. I know we gotta get a busy schedule, but, but we must take time, amen, to try to train that child in the way he should go. Amen. Christ extends a special invitation to children. Yeah, they will come if mothers and fathers bring them to Jesus Christ. Amen. A child, when they're very tender, when they're very young, they're very susceptible to what mom and dad have to say. You'd be surprised how their little mind, how their little eyes will perk up when you start telling them some things and training them. And when they learn, it looks as if a little light goes off inside their little mind. And they're telling us in so many words, I got it. I'm getting what you're saying. And so, so, so Christ welcomed the children. We must learn to train them. 
And then, 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 then while we're training them, amen, that there's just some things we got to take them by the hand and lead them. We ought to bring our children to Christ. Amen. A lot of times, parents, would, would, if you can catch a ride with somebody, they'll send them to church with somebody else. But, but can I just tell you, moms and dads, uh, it is your responsibility, it is your duty to get up on a Sunday morning and prepare that child to bring them to the house of the Lord. Matter of fact, it is on every morning that they rise from their sleeping couch. It is something that ought to be said to them about Jesus Christ. Well, why am I saying all of this? Well, I'm saying this because of so much destruction going on in our young people. There's so much destruction going on until it's saddening to see our young men and young women going to jail or some, some detention home because of a discipline problem. And I, I believe that, that if parents would do this discipline at home, you are aware of that child acting out when they leave home. So fathers and mothers are indeed wise in bringing their children to Christ and leading them to trust him as Savior at a very early age. Uh, Dr. Gaines S. Dobbins has said, the three-fourths of those who are one to faith in Christ, Jesus are one in childhood. Three-fourths of them are one in childhood. So that's a good, pretty good size of a number when you look at three-fourths. Three-fourths is a whole lot more than one-fourth and even a half, really. Amen. So, so Dobbin said that three-fourths of those who are one to faith in Christ, Jesus are one by childhood. And here, here are some of the ways I believe we can bring our children to Jesus. Let, let me suggest some things to you, and then I'll be finished with the message for this morning. Amen. By, 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 and to suggest to you, first of all, <clears throat> that child need to come up in a beautiful Christian home life. They, they can't come up in a life where there's chaos and where there's fighting, where there's cursing, where there is no restraint. Amen. Jesus must be talked about and read about in the home. Amen. I hope I'm talking to somebody this morning because I've seen in my lifetime where parents would disrespect children so much until they treat them like that adult. or they talk to them as if the child don't even exist. And this is a sad scenario. And so, so Jesus must be talked about and read about in the home. We must be careful of what their eyes behold and what their ears hear. Amen. That, that child have to form an opinion about us as they grow older in life. Amen. Your child can be brought to Jesus by means of earnest prayer on their behalf. Amen. So, so here's something else that might suggest to you. Don't ever be ashamed to let your child see and hear you pray under God. Because God expect us to set the pattern. God expect us to set the example. Amen. If you never pray around them, how are they going to learn how to pray? If you never call on Jesus, it's going to be mighty hard for them to learn how to pray. Amen. And so it ought to be something in our lives that, that we can talk to God about. Amen. Your child can be brought to Jesus by teaching them Christian principles from day to day. Amen. I believe it's in the Old Testament that Moses tells the children of Israel to talk about these things along the way. When you sit down and meet, tell them about God. I mean, when you rise in the morning, tell them about God. And, and then he said, also teach them and train them and, and make these principles as frontless above in front of your eyes. Amen. Take time out to read your Bible with your children and explain to them what the scripture means as you read the scripture. You say, well, well, Pastor, I don't understand all that. Well, that's why you got your pastors and your deacons, amen, and other lay person in the church who are studying the Bible. You can call and ask them, what does the what does the word say? What does it mean? And nothing wrong with you going to a Christian bookstore and buying yourself a commentary getting yourself some books that you can explain the scripture to your children. And this thing is very important. It's so important until I believe we can deter our young men and women from going to jail and getting killed in the streets of our world. So your child can be brought to Jesus by regular worship habit, both at home and at church. Amen. So these are some things I've given you. So, so we must be careful what they see. We got to be careful about, you know, what we say around them and how we act around them. We should not be ashamed to pray unto God. And then, then we ought to take time out 
to study our Bible and read the scripture with your child. Amen. And then, then the child should be brought to church. I know we're not in church now, but you ought to be in church right now. If you listen to me, you ought to be in service right now. Even in your home, you, you ought to be in service where you are listening, paying attention to what the scriptures have said to us. Well, I'm about to finish it because I said it's going to be short this morning. Amen. The Christ who commands us to bring our children help us with our children. We can trust him for grace and guidance. We can lean on him for wisdom and insight. We can look to him for the capacity to love uh, should our children conduct themselves in an unlovable manner. Christ will work in the minds and hearts and wills that we cooperate with him in teaching them. We can prove our love for our Savior by co cooperating with him and his purpose of redeeming and using our children for the extension of his kingdom on earth. Back in chapter 9, I got to address that this morning. Uh, back in chapter 9 of Mark's gospel, we're exposed to a conversation between disciples and the scribe. They, amen. One in their company had brought his son to the disciples to them to heal uh, him of a, uh, or cast the demon out of his body. Amen. Because Jesus was known for healing. Jesus was known for doing good. And so, and by his disciples following him, uh, they figured, well, we can take the boy to the disciple. Uh, but as they brought the boy to the disciple, they could not cast the demon out. And from, from, from this portion of the scripture, we can see that the father of the boy uh, believed that if he brought his child to the disciple, uh, uh, that the boy would be made whole. Uh, the end result of the conversation as Jesus questioned them was that the disciples could not do the job. Uh, but notice also that the father brings his full petition to Jesus to get help for his child. You see, when one can't do it, you ought to take it to Jesus. Notice what Jesus said in verse 19 of Mark 9. Jesus said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? And the thing that caught my attention here, although Jesus asked the question, but he said, bring him unto me. You see, Jesus didn't turn him away, but he wanted them to understand uh, that if you learn to pray and talk to God, uh, there's some things you ain't got to bring to him. Uh, because Jesus is able uh, to hear your prayer. Uh, he said, bring him unto me. Uh, we are commanded to bring our children uh, unto Jesus Christ. Uh, I also mentioned in our message uh, for the day that our children should cease faith in us. Uh, notice what Jesus said to the father uh, of this child of that verse 23 three of Mark 9. He said, if you can believe all things, a possible to him that believe. So when we come to Jesus, we got to believe. We got to believe that he is able to do what his word said. If we believe today when things happen to our children, God is able, amen, to bring it to pass with his blessing upon our children. Back in Mark 10, 13, and 16, we see parents bringing the children of Jesus to be blessed by him. And I see here that Jesus used the word suffer. It don't mean that you're suffering, but it means allow. Allow the children to come unto me and forbid them not. For such is the kingdom of God. And by the way, saint, we can't get in our skip in the glory ourselves. And we don't receive the kingdom of God as a little child. The man concerning our children. We have to learn to bring them to Jesus. I'm glad today that my parents didn't have much in their life, but they brought me to Jesus. They brought me as an early age, when I was just nine years old. They brought me to Jesus. And my mama would always share me, son, I'm not going to be with you all your life. And I want you to know that God is able. 
He will save you right now. And so I'm so glad this morning that I came to Jesus at an early age. And I submit to some parent today, why you take that child to Jesus? Well, he said, well, Pastor, we ain't got certain. But you got a closet in your house. You got a sacred room in your house. Why not bow on your knees? Tell them, come on in the room. For Jesus is able to bless you. Come on in the room. Let's have a little talk with Jesus. And you tell that child, you may not be able to see our God, but you can see him working in our line. And so the command here is we got to bring the child to Jesus. We can stop so much turmoil, so much trouble in our world. Our children have come through the park in lies where they don't understand. They do some things that they don't understand. They go contrary to the teaching. But somebody got to stand up and let that child know, you are my child, and God help us to bring you into the world. And so therefore, I got to tell you about the God that blessed me to stand at, at death door and bring you into the world. So so brothers and fathers, I submit to you that you bring the child unto Jesus and let God have his way in your life. You see, because it's a serious thing, children. It's a serious thing in our world today. I see it all. I say to myself, I wonder why parents won't train. I wonder why they won't take time out to teach the child. And you know, it's, it's a lot of time we do the stuff because we want somebody else to raise them, but it's not somebody else's responsibility to raise our children. It is our responsibility. It is mom and dad's responsibility. I know you got your own the little jobs and all this kind of stuff, but let me tell you something. If it had not been for the Lord, you wouldn't have a job. And so the thing that we need to do is take time to thank God for your children. Thank God that you have them and then train them because in the end, God's going to ask you, why didn't you train your child? Child, go and hurt somebody, take somebody's life, or do something silly, and we say, I don't know why they did it. Oh, yeah, you know why they did it. It's because of the fact that we won't take time out to train them. So, and, and the mother who is training, uh, my hat's off to you. I thank God for you training that child. Keep on doing what you do. Amen. Because if they get out and get caught up in some stuff, you ain't got to beat your head against the wall knowing you did what you did when they were small while they were young. And it's a true statement, y'all. I've been halfway around the world, and I thank God that the training that I had from home, amen, it brought me back home. I could have been this autistic. I could have been dead. I could have got in some serious trouble. But I thank God I always had an alarm system on the inside of me that would let me know, son, you're going in the wrong direction. And so, so the command for us is we've got to keep on training. We've got to keep on teaching. It might be a new world or some of us, but let me tell you something, the same God in this book here had not changed. He's still the same. He expects us to rear them in an upright manner and so that they'll be an asset to our society. And God will bless you for that. I know that he will. And so I thought to say that to you this morning because <clears throat> I don't want them to think that we're neglecting them and leaving them, keeping them to the curb. That's not what we do. We're supposed to take time out and rear them up in an upright manner and train them, let them know Sure, you're growing into an adult, but you ought to know that there will be a spiritual side about you that you are able to let the world know, I am a child of God. So may God bless you. Thank you for your phone few moments this morning that I can share with you. My prayer to God that you will always cherish and do what the Lord has required of you to do. Amen. And I know that God will bless you. He's blessing us now, and he still expects us to continue to do what we do. Amen. I think it was on Friday that I was headed over to the church and I saw the beautiful rainbow. I said to myself, well, God is letting us know, although we got some rain, he's letting us know that he's still honoring his promise. Y'all don't know what that rainbow meant. He told, amen, Noah, that I will not destroy the world anymore by water. And I put my rainbow in the sky to be able to see that. And so when I see that, I said to myself, thank you, Lord. You're still living. I know you're still in control and in charge of all of our life. God bless you. Let me pray for our sick and our shut in. And I want to thank you for your prayers for my niece. I understand that she had the surgery, has gone through that, and she's recuperating, recovering. And I ask that you continue praying for this Emma Jean Fidel. Amen. She's still on the battlefield. Keep on praying. The Lord will bless her and bring her through what she has to go through. And I have no doubt in my mind that God is able 
to bless us. Pray for the family as well. And others who may be sick and shut in, I do ask that you pray for them. Bow with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, we're grateful again for all that you have done. And we thank you, Master, for another privilege that you have granted us to sit before the camera. We thank you, O oh God, for your blessings that you've been showering about our pathway. But, O oh God, as we bow now, Lord God, we come bowing on behalf of our sick and our shut-in those in hospitals and nursing homes and even in their own home. Lord, we ask a blessing upon each one of them. Lord, we pray for that person whose body may be racked in pain. Oh God, I pray that thou would touch their body. And oh God, I pray for those, oh Lord, who are struggling these pressures of life. Thank you, dear Lord, for blessing my niece. Thank you, God, for blessing us, I'm a G. Pray that I can keep on blessing her, God, and continue to stand with and keep in your love your divine care. We know that all things are possible if we only believe. Father God, I pray for this COVID-19. I pray for those of God who are stressed out in the homes and some of them are at with sin. Lord, I pray that I would bring comfort in that home that's being disturbed now. Sometimes husband and wives can't get along. God, I pray that I would bring peace within them. Father, I pray that you bless our children today Lord, we need you in our children's lives. Bless the youngest one to the oldest one. God, I pray for those who are may, maybe getting ready to go online and do their studies online. I pray that I would gather that mind, that thoughts up together, be able to focus God and to get the lesson plans out. Lord, would you bless our teenagers, bless our young men as well. Oh, God, I pray for that young girl who has perhaps made some mistakes in life. Let them know, God, you still love them. You're able to bring them through. Have her to plead, Lord, please forgive me of all of my sin. And, oh, God, if we bow in Jesus, Master, we pray for our elders around Mount Zion. Pray for them one by one, God. Keep them under your watchful eye in your love, your divine care. Lord, we praise you today for you're worthy of all the praise. And, oh, Lord, our God, we pray, God, that thou would help us now to make preparation, to get ready. I believe you're going to do a mighty work. You put us back into worship. We do a mighty work, God, that you put us back where we can convene and praise your name together as saints in thee. Oh, Lord, would you bless our community, bless our neighbor, our brother, and our sisters everywhere, all over this broad land and country. Trust those, oh God, who in high places who make decisions affecting our daily life. Cause man to do what's right, pleasing in your divine eyesight. Oh Lord our God, we thank you now. I pray for the bereaved families everywhere. Let them know again, Lord God, that earth have no sorrow, heaven cannot heal. Pray that I will stand with and stand for them. Oh my God, when we come to the end of our journey, we'll not be able to stay any longer. When you cried our name somewhere, we pray, God, that I would exit us out of this place into thy presence, for we would have eternal joy. Peace, our God, rest in thee. Master, it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we humbly bow. Beg of you, thee, blessed our petition. For Christ's sake, our prayer in the name of others. Our soul says amen. Amen. Thank you again. May God bless you. May his heaven benediction be upon you. And I pray to God that he will continue to bless you in your going out and your coming in. I pray that God will give you good health, good strength. I pray that the Lord will keep you in his love, his divine care. I pray the Lord will bless your families, your children. I pray God will bless your community, your home. And I pray that his hand of protection will be about you. They will keep you safe from all the loose and pestilence. May the Lord bless you, saints, until we meet again. This has been once again Pastor Lewis and Watson, Pastor Mazine Baptist Church in Red House, Virginia, and certainly my music minister, Mr. Lewis A. Watson, Jr. May God bless you that we meet again, and we thank God for you allowing us to come into your home and to share a word with you. Amen and amen.